Well, goal number one for me t today, this afternoon, was to make sure that that unbelievable highlight was not the best part of the afternoon. Uh, that video we showed, wow, was that impressive. Gave me chills watching it. Uh, all of the incredible players that we've had here through the years, um, incredible teams. You saw, obviously, Urban. Uh, he and I were texting. I sent it to him. Um, he said, I think you'll enjoy this. And um, uh, obviously, you had Coach Mata's team and Evan and a couple of our former players were arguing back there. Uh, Terrence was upset that... Uh, Dockic got a got a shot in there, and I don't think TD did. So they can take that up with the video department. That's out of my control. But uh, what a, what a great uh, kind of way to tip off the the day. There was great having Coach Day here, uh, spending time with with him in the locker room. So obviously, I know this win means a lot to Buckeye Nation. Uh, we've got a lot of respect for for this Michigan team, and as I've said a number of times, uh, they compete, they play hard. Um, they're gifted, they're talented. Um, I think they're really well coached uh, with, with uh, uh, Juwan, um, really well coached. I think they're going to have a, a great finish to the season. So we've got great respect for them. Bottom line is players win games. Our older guys stepped up and made major, major plays today. And uh, it's a credit to them. Chris, we were asking a little, little bit about this yesterday, but Play really well in the month of February. Start off March with with a nice win here. It just seems like the connectedness that you guys had early has sort of come back a little bit. And I don't know. Do you want to take all the credit for that yourself? Or no. Like, <laughs> no. How, how, how did you guys sort of like get yeah. that back? Understanding that doesn't guarantee you anything moving forward. It's a good it's a good question, Bill. Because I you know I see it too, and I think trying to put your finger on when that started to come back and what brought that about. Um, listen, we, we realized plenty of people wrote us off when we were two and six. Um, I, you know, made fun of us, uh, had, had people kind of making fun of us and, you know, putting all their sarcastic tweets out there. Uh, I got them all saved, um, all of them. So, listen, that, that, we get it. I think we had to close ranks and find a way to um, uh, try to uh, come together and perform better. Uh, and own why we were struggling and what we were doing to struggle. Coaches, players own it. And, again, that goes back to the guys in the locker room, particularly our captains. They've owned um, the fact that uh, we have to perform better. Apologize for the sarcastic tweets. Um, <laughs> CJ, you've been playing Yours really well. Yours weren't the most offensive, by the way. <laughs> good, good. Uh, CJ's been playing really well over the last month, like has sort of coincided with how he's been playing. But to, to score the way he did in the paint tonight, yeah, I don't. He, he might have tied like a career high for two-point yeah. field goals, I think. Just yeah. what, what, what was he seeing out there from your vantage point that allowed him to do I that? I think, you know, the way they were playing um, uh, allowed him to kind of get in the paint. He made some good decisions off that. Again, so much of what we do – is predicated off of Caleb's ability to stretch you from the middle of the floor. Um, and um, I thought he did a really good job in the second half. He struggled finishing through contact in the first half, but I thought he defended. I thought he stayed engaged. But that his, you know, Caleb's ability to stretch that five or at least present issues for that five allows CJ to and other guys to make decisions. I thought CJ was great at attacking and finding seams. His floor game and his play in general, in terms of his floor game, has been outstanding for really about how long? About four weeks now, maybe, with the exception of a few games. I mean, he's, he's, his assist turnover ratio is number one in the Big Ten right now. And uh, as you said, he struggled at times finishing two-point field goals, but not today. Andre and Caleb, I think both of them banked in a three-pointer yeah. there down the stretch. and. Sometimes you need a bounce to kind of yeah. go your way. I mean, but that whole stretch, 23 to 9 after it was tied, the last, I think, five plus minutes, just seems like you got so much started out of your defense yeah. and not allowing them to score and then hitting the big shot at the other end. Yeah, obviously the bank didn't, you know, they, they, they were playing good defense. Uh, we just, we just, fortunately, we got it up on goal, uh, both Wessons. Uh, I told them, fellas, living right, uh, you get both those banked in. But uh, I, I thought both both guys, Andre and Caleb, played really solid games. Uh, but it was, you know, you get some of those, and there'll be times where somebody will bank one against us. But it, it's tough. It can be a little bit of a backbreaker in those situations. I think all in all, um, 
our guys. Uh, the biggest thing, as you said, was our defense there late. Our mm -hmm. defense was really good. And you guys were four games under 500, as you put out there, two and six at one time. Now you're guaranteed nothing worse than 500 and, and could go two over if you win these last two games. Just uh, the turnaround in general and just what's still out there for you guys because of the position you put yourselves in. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I have been a part of, of some, some turnarounds from a, a difficult January, um, but uh, I don't think I've been a part of one uh, this significant uh, where you've seen such a dr dramatic uh, turnaround. And, uh, you know, again, after the season, we'll sit down and try to figure out, um, try to figure out, uh, Sonny's calling somebody's phone. We'll try to figure out, uh, you know, why exactly that is. But we've, we've really had a dramatic uh, shift. And, again, I give credit to our players on that because I think they've, they've just owned the progress of this group, Steve. Um, and they own some of the struggles that we had, as we all had to. I'm sure you, as a, as a coach, it's probably a little disconcerting to have eight el healthy eligible players and then you're running maybe like a six, seven-man rotation. But you also sort of backed yourself into a situation where these guys fit together a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think that's obvious to – you know, those that follow us and watch us, I think, have seen that there's – now, obviously, we need Kyle back. You know, we're not, we're not a better team without Kyle. I'd like to have more depth than what we did. Ibrahima gave us good minutes the other day. EJ continues to play well. Justin, I thought, was really solid in his minutes today. Um, but uh, we need more. You know, I was a little concerned when Caleb got that early illegal screen. Um, I was almost upset with myself that, that we didn't talk to him more about, about that um, uh, in terms of the, that particular action. But uh, he did a great job playing, playing through that in the first half. That's why he played a little bit less. But, yeah, we've got a really good way about us with the tighter rotation. I don't know if that's as sustainable right now as we'd like for it to be. But um, it's working right now. CJ, 15 and 7, I think only one turnover, too. And it just seems like you said it's been like three, four weeks of prolonged play like yeah. this. And, and yeah. if you think about like four weeks ago, it's about when DJ Carton yeah. um, left the team. I just wonder, was there anything mental that he changed his mindset at all and, and took over that way? Or was it just sort of the season developed? As, uh, you know, I think pr you'd have to ask him that. My guess is he probably realizes, hey, listen, I'm going to have to, if we're going to progress as a team, CJ Walker – I've said all like he's going to be a really good coach one day. He's going to be a really good coach, and um, you know I love the kid, and uh, he's going to be a heck of a coach. And I think that he realized that he was going to have to lead and coach this team, and there was going to be more on his shoulders, and he's embraced that with, with uh, the absence of DJ. When your guards are rebounding the way Dwayne and CJ did today, how does that help your team? Well, defensively, they they've got to do it. We work on it every day. It's a big part of what we do because we are undersized. Um, we are undersized, but um, they've done a really good job at, at, at competing. It's an expectation. You're coming out if you're not going to defensive rebound. You're coming out of the game. Um, so they had to learn that early on. And then a couple of weeks ago, you talked about how like guys were still needing to figure out what their roles are, and you know, it seemed like was to take was today maybe like a, a great example of like everybody was. Like, I don't want to say cool with their role, but everybody excelled in whatever their role is on their team. Yeah, I think I, I do think the rotation when it gets tighter, I, in more in in general, I, to your point, I think in the last five or six weeks we've settled more into our roles, and that's probably a factor in the reason that we're performing better. Because um, I, I think there were probably times where we fought a little bit that a little bit in, in January. I think it was how much like, is some of the. I think it was like a two-point game at the under eight. When, when, when you're in those situations and you don't have Kyle, are you just thinking to yourself, man, we could really use Kyle Young in a, in a scrappy game like this? No, not in that moment because I knew we wouldn't have him. Um, I think what I was trying to do is figure out, okay, how can we put ourselves in better position to get better offense and, and how do we get a stop? But he does bring kind of that junkyard dog that you need in moments like that. Is it? Is it? Are you impressed with your team that you guys can find a way to win that kind of game, that, and how scrappy it was at times? Yeah. You know, without him on the floor, yes. with, without him in the lineup. Yes. Yeah, it helps. It you know it helps being at home. Our crowd, whoa, unbelievable! Wow, 
these last couple, you know, we need a big one on Thursday. Big, uh, obviously, I think I said that, you know, with honor and the – the 1960 national champion team and all that comes with that. And senior day is just so important to me that we prepare well for senior day. But our crowd was outstanding. So I, that does help being at home. But I thought we had some guys scrap today. Offensively, how much does it help when Dwayne hits like two or three where it almost looks like he's not looking at the basket? You're saying he wasn't looking at the basket? Yeah, it just he just seems like he gets on, he has these bursts where he'll hit two or three shots in oh, rapid yeah, fire. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, he sure does. Um, I think, you know, some of it you got to live with it, and some of it he's got to keep. But yeah, he he's he just he just plays with outstanding confidence. He he always has, and when he has it rolling like that, it really elevates us. Now, he's got to continue to do other things. I thought one of the things he's done these last couple of weeks when he's not made shots is attack the rim better. Um, but it was hard to attack the rim with Teske and their size today. We just couldn't do it. And then offensively, as, as a group, it seems like you're able to maybe do a few things you couldn't do earlier in the season. You've got some guys that are getting to the rim a little bit more. Yeah. Looks like you've – have you had to, to tweak things? Are guys playing with more freedom? Or have you sort of scripted things a little bit to where the offense seems to feel a little different than it did a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, we have had to tweak a lot of things. Um, we have. And we've, we've added some different stuff uh, that we felt like would fit this team better. Um, and we've also had to adjust now with Kyle out. But uh, – uh, we have, and I think we're settling into some of the stuff that we feel like we run better offensively. To the degree that you've had to make changes, are you, are you comfortable with having to, to make how, however much you had to change? Is that normal for this time of year? Are you okay with like having to do that much change, or is this? It's something we've always. Year? It's something we've always done as a staff. Yeah, we've been pretty uh, fluid, um, even into February with with kind of what we run and, and tweaking and changing things. Not dramatically, but we, we've, we've had to. You've had teams, I'm sure, on rolls, where you get a feeling as a coach that they're on a roll. You're 8-2 and two in your last 10 Big Ten yeah. games, tied for best in the league over that stretch. Does it feel like you're on a roll? And if, if so, could you contrast it to what the feeling is like for this role compared to some others that you've had where teams just steamroll people? I don't think I've had one like this. Um, n not in a league this, this great. Um, one, one year, one year at Butler, we had one, uh, we were seven and two, um, in the last nine, I believe, um, um, after starting out, uh, I forget, I think we were 12 and six that year, but, uh, I, not in a league this good and what to make of it. I, I'm so hesitant to, to make that a permanent thing, Bruce, just because I'm just concerned about, are we rolling? Tomorrow, what's our preparation tomorrow in practice? I don't think that's permanent. Clearly, you can look back at the last whatever ten games and say we have played well for the most part in most of those games. Uh, but I'm so hesitant to stamp and say, "Listen, that's w that's where we're at right now." We'll see how we um, perform against a really good Illinois team. Are you hesitant because of the personnel you have and the limitations you have with injuries and assorted things, or because of the league you're in? I'm hesitant because of the league we're in. I trust our guys. I'm hesitant because of the league we're in, and I'm hesitant because, you know, I'm I'm a maniac when it like just like I'm a little bit paranoid when it comes to that stuff. Why didn't nine and one come to your mind when you thought about Reynolds? Excuse me. Why didn't nine and one to start this season come to your mind when you were uh, thinking uh, about Reynolds? Unequal competition. Yeah, it's complete. It's apples and oranges. You know, people talk about the starts, uh, and we played a good schedule. People, you know, always throw that in our face with the, the start. Listen, um, you know, some of those games you could argue, right, uh, four or five, six of those games you could argue, we should definitely win. You know, it's not necessarily talent-equated games. Um, it's apples and oranges. How close was Kyle to being available, and, and what does it look like for him going forward now a couple of days till you play again? You know, Kyle uh, is, is working every day with Brad. Um, I, I'm hesitant to get too much. He's improving. I will say this right now. He's improving. I wouldn't want to give a percentage on how close he was today, but he is improving. It's, it's a little bit now like, okay, do we want to wait until he is, he's really good to go? You know, we want to get him back as early, but we want to get him back for – for the stretch run of our season where he can be healthy. Chris, uh, dumb question of the press conference. How important was it to get the sweep today? 
Well, listen, it's not a dumb question because I've been here now three years and uh, it's different in basketball. We've talked about that, but it matters. It matters to everybody that cares about this place, uh, to everybody that's been here. It matters to our former players. Uh, it matters to uh, our former coaches. It matters. So I'd be um, naive to say that it, it didn't you know, feel good. And when you're coming into a game like this, being as shorthanded as you are, are you guys coming up with some sort of game plan to kind of keep your guys' energy level in place and sustainable for the entirety of the game? Yeah, I, I think so. We're, we're, what we're doing is we're looking at um, um, alternate ideas and thoughts if we get into foul trouble in the first half. Who are we going to play? What are we going to do? Are we going to play a different type of a defense? Are we going to have to adjust to how we play? That's what our main thing is. Is, uh, is the fact that your bench is short, is, is it had a silver lining for, for you in that uh, you've had to kind of let the leash out and, and uh, let these guys play through some things themselves? Probably. Probably helps them. It's probably helped our team in some ways. Um, again, I'm not sure it's completely sustainable, but um, it's probably helped them in some ways and, and probably helped our team. But, um, yeah, yeah. Anything else, guys? Okay, thank you.